introduced to you in 19, introduced in 1965 at the Fullerton factory in California. Um, and I do believe this is pre-CVS. I don't think CVS had the brains to invent something like this. This looks like a, definitely like a Leo Fender project. Um, however, uh, the uh, company was sold in 1965, but Leo didn't sell the factory itself to CBS. He only sold the name of the company. So therefore, um, CBS had to make a new factory which they built the Corona plant. Um, I don't know what kind of um, position they had if they let them use the Fullerton plant or they just kept on with Fender production and that's what I believe. I believe that Fender production just kept on with the employees that were there while um, the uh, CBS was getting their new factory ready. Um, and then there's also the um, understanding that uh, they were closed down for a while too, for like eight months, and that's true as well. So that probably was during a period when they were replacing employees for less money, of course. Um, the reason is because, as you recall, back in those days, um, recession was starting to set in, all the way back in 65. And... Um, by the time it came to 81, when CBS finally had to close its doors, was the height of the recession. I mean, I remember getting, trading in silver quarters, solid silver quarters, for copper quarters, like in 1966. I mean, I, I got copper-centered quarters from 1966. So that's when the, the recession started to to build up. That's when our dollar started to shrink. So I believe that this is a Leo Fender project. There's no doubt about it. However, technically, and if you're going to go by date, this is not, this is, this is CBS. This is not pre-CBS. Okay, technically. But you have to look at that. This was introduced in 1965, 1966, circa, according to the project date code decoder. And according to Wikipedia, um, lasted from 1965 until 1970, and that's when it was taken off. So that really tells me that CBS had nothing to do with this project, because as soon as they, they got their factory in full swing in 67, making the large stock, headstock um, neck, right, changing the neck style on the fender from the small headstock, 62, 65, um, 64, 62 and then changing over to 67 the larger headstock and then in 75 making the bullet the one with the bullet and the three bolt in the back so um, I would say that this is now on the auction there's also I took a picture with a magnifying glass on the date of the pots and the pots say 19 they say 65 in the middle of where as you look at the pot, you'll see in the part, it says like 1265. That might be, that might be like a December or something. Oh, I don't, was, I don't I forget. It was, well, there's a month and then there's a date. So that would be 65, 1965. Um, now, let's go over to guitar. This was, as you can see, the Olympic white. These came in three colors. Uh, Olympic white. It came in the natural, the sunburst, the sunburst, which was a famous color back in them days, even with the uh, precision, precision bases, and um, as well as the strats. And uh, it came in, believe it or not, a blue. It came in, I think, a crystal, what? Lake Placid. Lake Placid blue. It came in a Lake Placid blue. So those are the three colors this guitar came in. Yes, the person did what I did to my 62 bass morons we are. Uh, back in them days, you know, we didn't know that all this was going to happen with the guitars recession and, you know, collectability stuff. So I got tired of my P bass being sunburst and plus it was getting all worn and everything from playing in the band. So I put acid to it and I took the coat off, you know, and I didn't put no paper to it, you know, and um, I just uh, rough it up with real fine 600 and then shellacked it, natural. That's what I think the person that owned this was going to do. They were going to take it down. And they did a really good job. As you see under the plate, 
in the pictures that it's sanded even there. None of the curves or anything looks like it was, you know, sanded away. So it looks like it's pretty good. However, it is sanded. And that's something we shouldn't do to vintage, vintage instruments. That does lower the value. However, in this case, because it's a 12 string and it's very rare and is very few made, uh, that hires the value. So you got like a balance caught here, weighted in the balances. You got something that's taking away from the value of the collectability, then you got something adding to it. You got the paint being taken off the body, definitely taking away from the collectability and the value. However, because there was only five years of production and very few made in those five years, okay, that, boom, puts the balance back. So I would say that this this guitar um, with um, my my rating of it would be uh, a very excellent condition. As you look into the electronics, none of the soldering points were resoldered. Mm -hmm. Nothing was taken apart. The fellow all he did was take the pick guard off, put back all the screws except one right here. But it was a screw from that era, and I believe that was in 1980 that he did this, as far as I got the testimony from the person that I got this guitar from. Now, he put back all the screws that belonged to the guitar, and none of the, nothing was unsoldered. I didn't bother taking the pick guard off to check it, because when I seen under the plate that that was untouched, there's no reason to take this off. That's going to be untouched. The pickups are screwed to the plate, so you could actually take this all off the body without unsoldering anything, which I believe the seller did. He did a pristine job on taking the paint off, so, okay. I love this switch. It looks like something from the 50s. Check this switch out. This is a three-way switch. ending there. It's a love song. It's going to be a love song. You can hear it. it's got like a kind of depressing sound. <laughs> Make you cry. Alright, the back of the neck is awesome. And the back of the thing. Are you running out of time? I'll get the plate. Okay, get the plate. So according to the decoder, it is a 6566 circa. And I think I seen a 12 before the 65, so that's probably why it's saying 6566 circa. Um, project decoder. Uh, the neck has no dings in it. I want you to know that this here is just like, I don't want to say dirt because that makes it sound disgusting. I don't know what that would be. It's not wear. There's no dings or nothing. There is one little spot like there. I think that's from not taking the paint off. I don't know. I don't know if this was painted, the back. I don't think so. Uh, the front headstock is, and you know how Fender would make the front of the headstock painted. No, this was definitely not painted the back. The rosewood on this is excellent. I want you to see these frets. Can you get on that frets? Look, 100% almost. I would say, I would venture just even to go 
98% life left. All the way down to the bottom. And they did put perloid dots, uh, inlays in there. Dots, inlays in there, okay? The nut is original, original. Everything is an original right to the F tuners, which is vintage. This is really, really, and look at look at the strings. I want you, can you get on that action? Can you get that action? See how close this is? Without no buzz. Get it? Without no buzz. All the way up and down the neck. Um, can you get in here? In the, in the ears, we call these ears. And this isn't dug into that's just shiny there that's nice and round he didn't sand that out so that's that's good he did a good job whoever did it must have been a professional sander or body worker or whatever if it was me and this was my guitar I would probably lightly sand it with wet 600 let it dry and then get a coat of natural um, nitro and I would I would put nitro on this you know, maybe about nine, ten coats of nitro, thin, thin coats. And, uh... All right, this is the neck. Here's the middle, middle. Here's all the pickups. Look how easy I can bend these strings. Look at this uh, tree. You see the string tree? That is awesome. That is so awesome. And even back then, they did a through the back See? Through the back strings. And I want you to look at this bridge. Each string has its own individual springed, loaded saddle. And I want you to notice that the saddles are rollers. And you see that the rollers have go right, it goes right on through for the intonation setup. Really nice bridge for 1965, I'll tell you. These are original knobs. They're not amp knobs. These are the original knobs, and you'll see when you Wikipedia, when you see the picture. Um, and look how good, good condition that bridge is in. So each string set has its own saddle, so it can be adjusted. Um, adjusting the height looks like this. Here you stick a... Um, a, uh, a hex key in there or allen wrench and you probably turn the allen wrench to bring this up and down see how it's like elevated right so this guy could go down and up right now you don't have to do that and I don't think you'll ever have to do that because the uh, setup has been this way since uh, the fellow had it got it in 1980 sometime and um, and uh, it's it uh, it's just perfect. I didn't have to touch. I didn't touch this guitar, except for take this plate off, take a picture of the pots, and take the pictures and get the information for you. So.
you got your bridge. Then you got all. We're going through a Trace Elliott amplifier that I do have up on auction as well. This is the one that's going for 475. There's nothing wrong with it. This is the one that's going for 350 that has the uh, loose connection on the um, input, on the first input. Which is not saying I got a tight lap or unless somebody wants to buy a tight lap. Okay, now finally the neck. So that's a stain. Ow! <laughs> Listen, man. Look at that. This is solid alder. Solid alder. We found that out from Wikipedia as well. Um, there is no... Let's see. There's one... It's a... Looks like a one... I don't see anything here. See anything here? I think I do see this definitely. Usually when they quarter and third it like that, it's usually just two piece. Oh, it looks like the Japanese learned something from the Americans. I thought it was the Japanese that did that. There is a little natural wood knot there. That's pretty rad. Yeah. Cool, right? Little Nicky thing. No? No. It's moved. And, um, you know, definitely I would say worth the money. This is really, if you want a nice 12 string, electric 12 string, I own a guild, the 108th Nade in, in Hoboken, New Jersey. And it was a 1960, I think that was a 1965. And it was a Starfire 2, not 3, 2. And um, that was beautiful as well. This one is a tad nicer than that one, as far as sound and as far as feel. But that was the double F hole, you know, like an ES model type. Uh, so, you know, that had a little bit di different kind of sound to it. However, as in the 60s, all the necks and set settings were pristine. So. Just want to introduce this to you and say thank you very much. I don't even have to turn this down. There's no noise. Humbuckers are noiseless. And uh, thank you very much for allowing me to show you this beautiful 1965 um, Electric 12. Fender Electric 12. Thank you.